the world's most notorious theatrical dramatic super criminal had left a trail of dead bodies across Asia. Still, his ultimate target was Blake Moreau, the chief police officer of Washington, and he blamed him for destroying his childhood, and vengeance was the prize. After kidnapping the president of the United States of America and murdering the entire Pentagon staffs, Lord Nemesis is under police custody. However, Lord Nemesis claimed it was all part of an elaborate plan, a plan that will get him closer to ending the life of Blake Moreau at the appointed time given, which is the 12th of March at midnight. Preparation was made to take Lord Nemesis to a well-secured prison, the North Branch Correctional Institution, and I must let you know that the prison guards were terrified of his coming, for they know his capabilities, as Lord Nemesis is no ordinary criminal. Now, Lord Nemesis' identity is still being determined, for they were curious if he is really Matthew Anderson, and moreover, it was impossible to take off his mask, for he had rigged his disguise as a booby trap with tiny explosives. Most importantly, they must still interrogate him to know the president's whereabouts. Every top dignitary worldwide paid tribute to Blake Moreau for apprehending Lord Nemesis, alias the master. Even his uncle, Howard Anderson, a friend of the chief of police was pleased and paid tribute to his success in arresting his nephew. There was happiness and relief in the air. The news of Lord Nemesis's arrest went far and wide, leading to Blake Moreau's family being released under police protection. And it was all over the news as his wife Peggy also paid tribute to her husband for his bravery and asked the press to respect their privacy. When the guards with a bind Lord Nemesis got to the correctional facility, he couldn't keep it shut. He was mouthing off, telling them that what was about to happen was no other than the chief police's fault. If he had just left his eccentric father from doing strange things, his childhood might have been better. He told them that he would burn Washington to the ground, that the president would die, and that they were leaving a false hope if they thought these chains would hold him down or stop him from his next act. At the same time, the chief of police was speaking at a press conference to confirm that Lord Nemesis had been apprehended and that they were getting close to finding the president location. Lord Nemesis's gang of thugs was still on the loose, but it posed no public risk according to the source he was given. But to be frank and to be honest, the source was wrong, for Lord Nemesis's gang of thugs had already infiltrated the correctional facility and also rigged the correctional facility with explosives and killed everyone in the IT department, which was where the controller room of the facility was located. Unknowingly to the prison guards, the prison had been subtly taken over by Lord Nemesis's gangs of thugs. And even up to now, Blake Moreau still relied on the source given that Lord Nemesis's gang of thugs were irrelevant without their leader. Little did he know, Lord Nemesis ordered Johnny, one of his thugs in the controller room, to switch off the facility's light. And before the guards surrounding Lord Nemesis knew what was happening, they were fired upon and gunned down by an imposter among them who was initially working for Lord Nemesis. Lord Nemesis ordered the lights to be switched back on and told the imposter to release him from his bind position. At the same time, Johnny warned Lord Nemesis that about a hundred guards were coming in his direction and asked if he should open the prison cells to release prisoners to distract them from his escape. Still, Lord Nemesis told him not to do that, for he could take care of himself by dealing severely with the upcoming aggressive guards, and he wanted to teach them a lesson they would never forget. Not holding back, Lord Nemesis launched his himself and dived towards the crowd of guards approaching him and he told his gang of thugs that he was fine on his own. He was fast and strong and the guards didn't know what was coming for them for he was relentless in his aim and he did it without remorse and when he struck he went for the kill. Lord Nemesis is not only a super criminal but also a theatrical entity and a perfect villain. Everything to him is a performance for all to see, a typical show of a dramatic rebellion.
rebellious nuisance without a cause and a turn in the flesh to societies. He was unpredictable and chaotic, a nightmare to all who crossed his path and brought fear to those that underestimated him. And the guards didn't know the hurricane that hit them, for he was ripping through them like scissors cutting through paper. Lord Nemesis wasn't holding back. Anything or anyone he touches dies and the guards, mostly men, wept in severe pain to their death. They screamed as they were mutilated by the theatrical villain, giving an excellent performance of bone cracking, choking and neck twisting. Lord Nemesis uses the guards' buttons as weapons against them. It was a painful experience for the guards and a horror show for the prisoners in their cells, for they had never seen anything like this. It was monstrous, grotesque, hideous, gruesome, appalling, abhorrent and abominable. Even for the heartless criminals in prison, Lord Nemesis conquered them all. According to Shakespeare, hell is empty and the demons are here. But I say it takes only one demon to bring hell on earth. When Lord Nemesis killed all the guards, he told Johnny to release all the prisoners. All the prisoners ran out of the prison and to top it all, Lord Nemesis gave each prisoner a car to drive away in. Remember that Lord Nemesis' gangs of thugs rigged the prison with explosives. Well, as soon as everyone left, the correctional facility exploded, killing all the guards in prison. Still celebrating the capture of Lord Nemesis, the chief police got the news that had gone down in the correctional facility as Lord Nemesis and his gang of thugs had killed all the staffs, released all the prisoners, about 2,000 of them, on the streets of Washington and blew up the correctional facility to the high heavens. Blake Moreau realized that Lord Nemesis intentionally got himself arrested. He instructed his men to contact his wife Peggy and arrange for his family to receive police protection. Unfortunately, it was already too late. Although his wife Peggy was safe, his children, the boy and the girl, had mysteriously disappeared without a trace. At the police headquarters, an hour later, Blake Moreau and his wife Peggy got a recorded tape from Lord Nemesis, letting the chief of police know that his gang of thugs kidnapped his children and this was his demand from the chief for if he didn't comply, he would send his children to him in bottles. Lord Nemesis wants the chief of police, Blake Moreau, to reveal his three big family secrets. And just in case Blake Moreau doesn't know what he's talking about, he can ask his beautiful wife Peggy. Then Lord Nemesis told him he will be calling him tonight to get his answers. Later that night, Lord Nemesis called as promised. No matter how they tried to track his call, it was still impossible to locate his location. For Lord Nemesis was the most evasive, villainous villain of all time. Time. It was like he was writing a script. Who knew the beginning and the end of each chapter of events? Lord Nemesis demanded the three big secrets be revealed, starting from his wife's indiscretion, for he had all the facts, referring to Peggy if she told her husband, Blake Moreau, everything. Peggy begged him to return their children. And you should know that whatever secrets Lord Nemesis demands from the chief of police is a way to embarrass him publicly, a way to strip him of his dignity. The first secret was that after Blake and Peggy got married, Peggy had a sexual relationship and a romantic affair with his old partner, Milt Daniels, for 18 straight months. She considered leaving him at a point, but Milt Daniels broke it off as he was getting married to another woman. And then Lord Nemesis asked him why he thought his wife had started this relationship. Blake Moreau confessed that he was an inattentive husband who neglected his wife because he was too focused on his career. He was also unable to satisfy his wife sexually. And Blake Moreau's second secret is that his son is a homosexual. Again, Lord Nemesis asked him why he wasn't privy to this information. Was it because he would be disgusted due to him being a Catholic? Blake Moreau told him that his son was scared of revealing his sexual identity because he thought he would hate him, but he would never hate his son, no matter what. And the third secret is that his daughter got pregnant and had an abortion without telling him because she wanted to go to college to further her career and she knows he would disapprove. Satisfied that he had humiliated the chief of police and rattled him emotionally by revealing his family secrets to the world just like he disgraced his father and family in the past. He kept to his word and released the children in a truck outside the police headquarters without a scratch. So they thought. 
Not too long, Lord Nemesis released news online that Blake Moreau's daughter was pregnant for his homosexual brother, his son. And when the doctors tested his daughter, they found out that Lord Nemesis practiced artificial insemination on Blake Moreau's daughter, in which they found out that she was pregnant for Lord Nemesis had fertilized her eggs under anesthetic but he also added something in the procedure which had never been seen before as he rigged her womb which made it impossible for abortion and if abortion is attempted her womb will collapse and she wouldn't be able to have any offsprings this news made his wife extremely mad for she blamed him for their family's predicament citing that he was selfish and only cared about his job but hey wait a minute that's rich coming from her wasn't she the one who was ramping her way into bed with his former partner anyways Blake Moreau told his partner Sergeant Lee to get him one of the best undercover cops in Washington by the name of Alex Kirby who had done some robberies with Lord Nemesis's gang of thugs but when it came to a critical mission Lord Nemesis uses his favorite. Blake Moreau made him understand that he is not judging him for his actions for as an undercover cop sometimes you are forced into a situation where you get your hands dirty. Through all of this, Alex Kirby got the addresses of the gangs of thugs involved with Lord Nemesis, including the super criminal's hideout, even his identity, and Blake Moreau had always had his suspicion about this suspect, and he and his men were going out to get him this time.